I have absolutely no reason to buy a printer. At boot fair, this printer cost just 10 pence, so I had absolutely no reason to not buy a printer, so I brought it just so I could take it apart. When I got it home, I found it came with a 30 volt DC power supply. This is the highest DC power supply I've come across, and I'm going to overvolt some stuff with it in a later video. Now to taking apart a printer. I took out all of the screws I could find, but refused to come apart, so I hit it with a hammer. And now let's see what the different motors do. This motor doesn't sound good. And here's another motor. And now to taking apart the scanner. The scanner's motor has to be really accurate for it to be able to scan stuff. So it has a stepping motor, which has three inputs, and every time you put electric into one of the inputs, the motor moves a step. So you have to put electric into the inputs at the right order to make the motor move across, a bit like a variable frequency motor. So simply putting electricity into this motor does not make it spin. And now, I'm currently creating a museum in my house. One of the things I'm collecting is old electrical items, but this printer's not old enough. One of the other things I want is taking apart electrical items to show how they work. But this printer's a bit big and it's not really interesting enough, and it smells badly of cigarettes, so I don't really want it in my museum. So what shall I do with it? I know, I'll smash it up! And now let's get the bigger hammer. Oh look, here's a sheet of glass. I wonder what I can do with this. I know I'll smash it. And here's what a printer now looks like. And this is what happens if you put a motor underwater and put electricity through it. Water conducts electricity and is short circuiting the motor, but as copper conducts electricity better than the water, some electricity is still going through the motor enough to make it still spin.